Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. Toolboxes come in all different shapes and sizes and are made out of different materials. Some are elaborately built to hold a collection of tools like this one. Others are just a simple tool tote. And then there's this one. I affectionately call it the Bergener Toolbox, named after my friend Fred. It's his design. Come see how we build it here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at our toolbox. Great, nice little toolbox, perfectly at home on the workbench or at the job site. We're using half inch plywood for the carcass of the toolbox and quarter inch plywood for the front and back. We have a hardwood handle. Inside, we have a couple of drawers suspended. Nice little area to put your sharpening stones or a hand plane or whatever you might need on the job site to help you out. All right, the meat and potatoes of this box, the joinery that we're using, are called box or finger joints. Just imagine you interlocking your fingers like that. Now, they also give, I like the contrast and colors of the ingrain of the plywood. You can make this box out of hardwood if you want and use contrast woods and really make these pop. But they're easy to cut. I'm going to show you the jigs we used. And th this is them right here. These are a couple of sample pieces I have. They interlock and really form a nice, strong joint. This gives you a lot of gluing surface. It's perfect. Half inch plywood. This box is sturdy. First thing we're going to do is cut our pieces to size. Let's get going. All right. The beauty of this project is it's a great way to utilize your cutoffs. I have a couple of pieces of half inch plywood here. I'm just going to go ahead and rip them down to the width I need and then we'll cross cut them to get our length for our pieces. Now I've set my table saw fence at eight inches. I'm using a fine finish blade. There's 80 teeth in there. It leaves a cleaner cut on plywood. I have my safety glasses on. I'm doing a lot of talking, so I'm not wearing a dust mask, but you could have your earplugs, your headphones on as well. All right. Normally when you're cutting boards, you want to raise the blade so it's about a quarter of an inch, or I use the thickness of a pencil just above your work surface. Being that it's plywood, I left the blade a little higher, you get a cleaner cut as well. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and cross cut those pieces the size. And my table saw sled down here gives me a good work surface. Helps hold these up just nicely. Support our boards, make sure they're against the fence. All right, I just made a quick measure at 14 inches. I'm going to bring my board up to that line and we'll cross cut, get our side.
There we go. That's it. We have our pieces for the carcass of the box. Now we just have to go ahead and cut our box joints to hold it together. I chose this size and style of toolbox. This is a great utility toolbox. I mean, you can make bigger toolboxes. I mean, there's people out there. I'm one too that covet hand tools, and you might want to put them in a special place and keep them, keep them perfect. Uh, this one though can be carried to a job site. It's a good size for that. It's a great, very at home on the workbench. You can put your chisels in it, hand planes, and whenever you need it, just open up and grab it. And also it's special to me. I made this one when I uh, was in school doing my apprenticeship. All right, the key to the toolbox is the box and finger joints that we're using to join this thing together with. I've attached my stacked dado blades, taken out the old blade. I have a box joint jig that I made here. Pretty simple. This one looks a little elaborate. I can adjust it to fine tune it. Um, just take your time setting up and you'll get great accurate joints every time. So I have half inch blades in here. We made one cut with the dado blade. We then moved it over, made a second cut and attached an indexing pin. Now let me show you how this will work. Here's my sample pieces. Put the board up. We'll make a single pass and then we just simply move this over and make another pass to create the box joints, the fingers. Now the distance from the peg to that cutout right there is half an inch as well, the thickness of our blades. So this jig rides right in the table saw slot, but it doesn't even have to be that fancy. You can use a simple piece of plywood, a piece of hardwood for the indexing pin, and it's the same thing. You have a notch cut out with your dado blades, and that's the size of the finger or box joint you want. And the distance over to the next cut is half an inch, or whatever you're using. If you're making quarter inch finger joints or three eighths, it would be that. And then you attach your indexing pin into that other notch you cut out. All right, we're gonna do a couple of test piece, you just don't want to assume everything's set up perfectly right off the bat. I've raised my blade, the height I need, and we'll just do a few test cuts, see how we did. Extra indexing pin when I made my original one. This is the cutoff, so I'm just going to use it as a reference. It's a little proud, but that's perfect. These will just protrude a little bit. I can sand them off or leave it. That'll be a nice fit. Now, if, you, if you're making a, a toolbox with quarter inch pins or fingers, make a collection of these. I have a bunch of them, and I just keep them in a coffee can. That way you don't have to make them again. All right, I think we are good to go and do it on our proper pieces. Now, one thing you have to watch out for, set up the boards the way you want them and draw a mark on it, a witness mark, anything, so you know which side to cut. Also, one thing you have to watch, um, the outside and inside of the box, there's gonna be a little tear out, so go slow, you don't wanna go too fast, you'll get more tear out, if you go too slow, you can get some burning. So it's just a happy medium. Now this is fir plywood, so both sides are pretty much the same, but I like that side better, so we're gonna have that side out. And here we go. Before you go and make your next cut, just do a little housekeeping. Check to make sure there's no debris in there. You want this to be registered against the fence and down on the table properly. There we go, look at that. Now if you wanted to, you could work out so that uh, everything was evenly spaced. Well, they are evenly spaced, but at the end that it was a true half inch socket. Sometimes it could be a little less. It doesn't matter though, they're all gonna register together. Okay, I'm simply just gonna turn this over 
and do the same thing on the other side. There we go. That's awesome. Look at that. So easy. Don't be intimidated. You don't have to make an elaborate jig like this. You can make the simple one. Um, there's how-tos on the internet, woodworking books. Go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead, do the same thing on my other side, and then we'll come and we'll talk about the top and bottom. Many, many years ago, I did a formal apprenticeship. And as a part of your training, your apprenticeship training, you have to go to school. You have to go to a, a community college um, that offers uh, that training in conjunction with your apprenticeship. So I actually spent a year um, in a cabinet making program. And one of the instructors there, Fred Bergener, is his name, he came in religiously every day carrying, um, well, a toolbox just like this. And uh, I ended up becoming very good friends with Fred. He had a great sense of humor, but this was his briefcase. He had his uh, notebook in there, some hand tools in here. And uh, every day he'd come in wearing the same suspenders and carrying this toolbox. And uh, he had a golden retriever dog that uh, would come to school with him and uh, called Molson. And uh, Molson would come around in your workbench and steal your lunch. Awesome. There we go. We have our sides cut. Now, you just want to line up. Don't forget, we cut these the same. It's easy to get turned around with this. We're just going to figure out our outside, and then that'll dictate where you start. If you're going to start cutting a socket or cutting a pin. And we need a pin at the very end of this one. So. Same thing, just going to start right up there, do the same on both sides for both boards, the top and bottom. And then we have all the joints cut, we'll go ahead and glue up our box. All right, I've laid out my boards the way I want to glue them up. Just spread some glue out here and I'm just going to go put some glue on either side of the fingers and go around, do one after the other. This can be a little tedious, just take your time. You don't need the rush. You don't want to go too slow, though. Glue get tacky on you, but you don't have to panic. I'm just going to go ahead and set this one in here. A little trick here. Use some spring clamps, and it's just like an extra hand, a third hand there to help hold that up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side. Nice. All right, let's throw in a couple of clamps. I've created these square blocks to keep this in square, make sure it doesn't rack. I've covered it with packing tape, and we're just put a, gonna put a couple in the corners here. You don't need it in every corner, just a couple. Perfect. We're just going to let that sit for about an hour. You can, if you want, I mean, it's, it's going to get used more than any tool in the, the wood shop. So you, you're going to think about finishing. So uh, Fred, what Fred did, and I thought it was great, he fiberglass. He put sheets of fiberglass over um, the toolbox. That way the corners don't get ding and it just will last it a little longer. So you want to put a good coat of varathane on it or something like that. All right, while we were waiting for the carcass of the toolbox to dry, I went ahead and I cut some parts for our drawers. Let's have a look at the original. We have a front and back, two sides. The back is cut a little narrower than the front because I, I cut a groove in our two sides and our front to fit the bottom in, so it's a fixed bottom, but I tack it to the back. That way if it breaks, you don't have to take the whole drawer apart, make a new one. You can just tap out the parts for the bottom and make a new bottom. So we have two sides with our tongues on it and then our front and back have our grooves and they're just quarter inch. All right, let's go ahead and make our drawers. Always make a test piece. I have our test piece here. I have our sides, our front and back. And what I did I have a false fence on here so I can bury the blade a little bit. I have my stacked dado blades and I just put the two blades, not the chippers in there, to form a quarter inch cut. And I'm just, I have my miter gauge 
and we're just going to raise up the blade, do a test piece first, until we get this tongue. So we're going to have a quarter inch thick tongue, and it's going to be a quarter inch deep. And it's going to fit in to a quarter inch mortise or groove that we cut in there. And that's what we're going for. Hopefully we can get that nice fit again. There we go. You can see how that is. A nice fit. I didn't have to force it in or pound it with a hammer. You don't want to split it. You're going to put some glue in here. So should be able to hold it up and not have it fall out. Perfect. All right. I've tightened the blade in place. I'm just going to go ahead and just cut the other pieces. All right. Now what we need to do is to make our groove. So we have a quarter inch tongue and we want this as flush as we can be, we want it a quarter inch away from the edge. So we have a quarter inch space, a quarter inch groove for our tongue. And all I'm going to do is move my fence over. And if you want, you can use this as your gauge. You put it up so it hits the side of that bl blade. Mark that. Best way again, make a test piece. Have a scrap of wood, cut it and always make adjustments there. All right, we're good. Just going to go ahead and cut the other grooves in the back and our front. It's a great project um, as a learning tool as well. Um, we had to make a jig to create our box or finger joints. And uh, so you, we learned a little bit. Somebody could learn a little bit about um, gluing surfaces. Um, with the finger joints and creating the finger joints. Our drawers, our tongue and groove joinery, learn a little bit about that or just how to fit a drawer, making drawer runners, installing some hinges. So just in this little project, there's a lot to learn. I've taken out my stack dado blades. I put my single blade in there. Now we're going to cut the groove for our drawer bottom. We're going to make two passes. It's not quite quarter of an inch. So we're just going to make one pass, move the fence over. It's real easy to get turned around here. So also you want to look for the better top and bottom. It's going to be visible. That's what we're looking for. So I put an X where the groove is going to be. Same with there and on this piece. All right, let's go do it. That looks good. Just going to move the fence over so we can fit our bottom in. And you want to leave enough meat at the bottom. This is plywood so that that doesn't break off. All right. We have all the grooves cut and the front and side pieces. All the drawer parts are cut. We're just going to go ahead and glue those up. The handle, again, this was the genius of Fred. You know, at first I thought he made a mistake. I was like, your handle's not in the middle. But you don't want that. You want it offset. So when you carry this, this is going to be heavy. You're going to be lugging this thing around. When you carry it, it leans into your hip and makes it easier instead of walking like this with the handle in the middle. All right, we've glued up our drawer boxes. While they're drying, we're going to make use of our time and cut our drawer runners. Let's have a look at the box here. This is pretty simple. We have a piece of plywood. You can make this out of hardwood if you want, but plywood's more stable. And with a dado blade, we're going to cut two grooves in it, the width of our drawers, and just screw them onto the side. Now here's the other genius of Fred Bergener. It was great. You can see how the drawer runners extend past the front of our box. What that does, let me see, get these back in here. It creates a lip for the front to close onto. All right, let's get started. All right, I have my stack dado blades in here. I've moved the fence over about 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge of that blade. And what we're looking for is we want essentially 3 eighths. We're going to cut away 2 and a half inches, maybe a little more, the width of our drawer. We want a center piece, 3 eighths. 
cut away another groove and have three eighths at both ends. All I'm going to do is make a pass, flip the board over, make another pass, and then hog out the middle until I get that three eighths left in the middle. There we go. So there we go. I made one pass. We have three eighths there. Turn the board around, made another pass. You can see how that's starting. So now we're just going to move the blade over. I'm going to measure two and a half inches from the edge of the blade to the fence. Make a pass. Again, turn it around, make another pass. That'll leave our center runner. And then we're just going to hog out the middle. All right, that looks great. We've hogged out the waist in the middle and we've created a channel for both drawers to fit in. All we have to do now is countersink some screw holes, attach those to the side of the box. It's a lot of fun. But again, mostly I wanted to build this. Just remember Fred, he's since passed and Fred was a great instructor. His um, table saw lectures, a 15 minute lecture would turn into about an hour and a half. He would talk about, get into his canoe trip, his recent canoe trip, and then it would turn into the photos he took on his uh, canoe trip. So he was a, a fun guy and uh, sadly missed, but he really um, turned a lot of people on to furniture making and woodworking. He was a great, great teacher. All right, let me show you what I did. I went ahead and cut our drawer bottoms to size and installed them, and I attached them with a single screw right in the center. Also, I took a Forstner bit, measured the center of our front, drilled through, and then with my handsaw, I just came down and elongated that hole, and that creates our drawer pull. Our runners are complete, drawers are done. Now all we have to do is we have to cut a rabbit around the inside perimeter of our front and back of the toolbox carcass, and that's so we can install our Luan mahogany panels. I'm going to do that over on the router table. All right, I have my portable benchtop router table I made set up. I have a quarter inch rabbiting bit in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in slowly and then move the box around the router bit to form our rabbit. And you want to go against the rotation of the cutter. If you don't, it's going to run. The spore is going to run. You have a hard time holding this down. go. We have our rabbit all around. Our panels are going to fit in there. And when I cut my panels, I'm just simply going to knock off the corners on the sander to create that round curve, glue, and tack them in. All right, let me show you what I did. I went ahead and in cut and installed my front and back panels. I then just took a, a coffee can, a yogurt container, whatever you want, and I just marked it and notched and rounded those corners off on the sander. Now what we have to do now that this is all glued up and solid, we have to cut out our lid. And we're going to do that on the table saw part way and then finish it off with a jigsaw at the workbench. Now, the first cut I'm going to make is about two and a half, two and three quarters up from the bottom. And that is going to be our hinge point right there. I have a 80 tooth fine tooth blade in here. Um, you, you get a lot of tear out with plywood, so just take your time. You don't need to raise the blade too high, but you definitely want to make sure you get through your workpiece. So, it's easy to get turned around here. Make your reference marks. All right.
Okay, now that we have that, that's our hinge point, I have to go ahead and do the same thing for the top and then the sides, but we're gonna stop part way at the sides. What I've done, I've taken a square and a pencil and I've drawn a reference line there and that tells me where I'm gonna stop. All right, I'm gonna turn this around so we can make our cut on the top. Now you just want to make sure, you know, I have it at two and three quarters inches, but you want to make sure you're going halfway in between either a pin or the socket, just uh, for aesthetic reasons. If you cut it too loose, it could just look a little funky. So, alrighty. There we go. You can see how now I'm going to cut down to here and there's my hinge line. So I want it to stop and then again I'm going to take a coffee cup, um, a yogurt container, anything you want and we're going to draw that curve and then we're going to continue to cut out that line and the lid with a jigsaw. Or you know if you want to do a hand coping saw, whatever you're comfortable with. Alright, now I'm just going to turn it over on its side and make our stopped cut. Okay, I've made my stop cut. We're just going to turn it around. I've moved my fence over. I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, there we go. I'm just going to go ahead, take my jigsaw, and cut the rest all the way through. All right, that looks great. Now, all that's left to do, we're going to install our drawer runners. We need to put a cleat on either side, our hinge to attach our hinges. Let's go ahead and do that. Alright, I attached my hinges to our hinge cleats, our drawer runners are installed for our drawers. I went to my hardwood scrap bin and just cut out a hardwood handle, screwed that on. You don't want to glue it because if this tips over and breaks, then you have to replace the whole thing. Alright, as usual, I had a great time building this project with you. I think Fred would be proud. I hope you come back and see us again here in the garage. Just found your number, thought I'd drop you a line. You no, know I've been out on this road such a long, long time. Just wanted to let you know I'm doing just fine. But hey, hey, I'm doing fine out here on the road. As long as I have friends to call, I'm there. Yeah, just you're assuming I know what I'm doing. <laughs>